Hey, what's up, guys? This is Cobb, and welcome to, well, a little bit of this. Oh, yes. It's gonna be the Sledgehammer Rush. To end all Sledgehammer Rushes. Actually, let's just get them like here or something like that. That'll do, man. A little bit of quick supply specialist in this one. I never, ever picked the specialist, but here we are today. And all right, man. Let's see how we do. Our centrally placed tanks are gonna get to respond to one side nice and quick. That's why I like to place the tanks mostly in the middle, in between two bases. Seems to work pretty good. Honestly, with him being this close, there's a case to be made for just going mech rage right away here. I do wonder if it is worth it. Nah. We'll probably be just mass recruiting a lot of fangs, I think. Protect ourselves against missiles. Give us some kind of defense against phoenixes, which he could go into. We give him a little wave. Okay, man. Yeah, let's just uh, switch. Ooh, God. All right. Hmm. I guess this is going to be all about the stangs. I guess, I think, maybe. Yeah, let's do it. Let's grab the stangs. And I guess we won't be able to quite mass recruit uh, after all. Let's get some nerds here. Some nids maybe here. These guys are just to block missiles, really. These guys are the real chaff. And these nids... Maybe just go here, to be honest. Watch this flank a little bit. Run in behind the crawlers, kill off the fangs. It's gonna be their main job. I guess that'll do just fine. Uh, plus a check, just in case he picks up the rhino here. He might actually go for the early rhino pickup. Okay, never mind, he goes for the Typhoons. Which is fine. We're gonna kill off those fangs very, very quickly. Quicker than I was uh, anticipating. Oh, what the hell? He goes into wasps. Okay. Well, I really hope the Stangs are able to take care of that. We've got to get them dead quickly, because they're not gonna last very long, uh, those Mustangs. No! There's like two left! Okay, good. Alright. Winnable. Winnable, man. In fact, one. We just have too many nerds left alive for him to do anything about this. And look at this, dude. Oh my god, we have so many upgrades available. Can this last pack of tanks get the upgrade? They can. Okay, tight. They are all ready to level now. Very good. Real happy about that. And we still got one more turn till he hits his rhino. Nice. Yeah, they literally all get upgrades, man. That's huge. Speed specialist, hell yes. Didn't even have to think about that for a second, dude. Um, guess more crawlers would be best. Just because the typhoons really kill off fang. Like I was gonna go like another like fang unit, maybe a fang unit here, but I feel like these guys just wreck them too hard. Extra crawls on the other hand, a little bit tankier, a bit harder to bring down. W would uh, yeah. should buy a bit more time at least for these stangs to do what they need to get done. I think this positioning is fine. Let's just stick with that. Okay. Ooh, he's gonna miss out on the stangs. Okay. I don't think any of them get out of that. Even with speed specialist, I think they all just kind of get away. Uh, sorry, I, I I think that none of them get away. Which is damn sad. We only need one of them to live. To have a good time here. Okay. So steel balls, and there's a rhino coming next turn. So we do lose this round, um, no matter what. I believe the next player will probably be Scorpions. Probably, maybe. Just something to get these guys dead, something to sit behind the tanks, clap the steel balls, kill rhinos. Yeah, I think Scorpion will do just fine next round. <laughs> Goddamn wasps, dude. You know, even with the wasp living the whole time, we almost win the ground battle. <laughs> like, even with the steel balls and the wasps. Like... God damn. I think if the Stangs live there, we actually still win that, to be honest. Uh, amp core on some of the tanks? I mean, it would be funny. I don't know if it'd be good, but it would be funny, so let's just do it. <laughs> which is the logic by which we make decisions. 
on this channel. These guys in here. Probably should get one in here as well. He might choose like Rhino here in rush building. Could flank with it. I guess we should spread this guy out quite a bit. Something like so. Guess that's fine. Okay. Rhino's coming in down that side. Alright, he's still just focusing everything on that one side. So hell, the Scorpion should still be able to have a bit of a field day here, man. Level 1 Scorpion is still able to one-shot even level 2 Steel Balls. So it should get a good amount of value. The Rhino might be a bit annoying. It will take a good bunch of shots to actually bring down. The Chaff is also building up quite a bit. Like, we're definitely going to need a uh, Mech Ridge quite soon on the Sledges. To actually get all of his chaff dead. Either that or we just say, you know what, screw this. Like, all of his chaff's one side. You know, one Vulcan here with, like, incendiary. We do a hell of a lot of work on this one side. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It's a fine hit uh, already from the Scorps. Nice, bring another two down. Very good. The Scorpion is going to have to turn around here and get some good hits though and just say, Oh my god, what are these guys doing, dude? Sometimes the AI is like a bit too intelligent in this game, man. They just bail from the front line and go straight for building, dude. What? Oh my god. Okay, well, same story as last game. We can't kill the uh, wasps anymore anyway, so... That just is what it is. He actually amp cord on the wasps. Can he speed up? Never mind, I just sped it up for you guys. A little bit of a uh, little bit of time travel magic there. Okay. Uh, ooh, junior manufacturing, dude. Damn. Strike specialist also fine. If we want to do something cheeky for a round. Hmm. I think I like junior manufacturing though. I just like it. We're going to get the upgrade here. Don't think we need the upgrade on the Scorpion just yet. It's still able to one-shot the Steel Balls. The Rhino. We need to come up with something a little bit better than what we're doing. You know, what with them having Wasps online and stuff, it wouldn't surprise me at all if this guy went for, like, some kind of crazy cheeky flank play. Would not be a shock. For that reason, we do something a bit more like this. And just get some stangs in that are going to sit behind the sledgehammers here instead. Keep these guys nice and safe uh, from the wasps. Alright, let's do that, man. Yeah, wasp, wasp range, steel balls. Really wish more crawlers were just going to go up this way, but that is what it is. So these tanks are just doing some pretty incredible damage now. 3.3k damage per shot. We're at least going to drastically slow down the rate at which he's going to get to connect over here, so that's something at least. We're just going to win pretty handily over here on this side, though, is the issue now. Oh, he's gone for building. Get them wasps dead. Go, Stangs, do it! Not enough, not enough. Not quick enough, rather. Alrighty. See if he wants to speed up on this occasion. Got a feeling that he ain't. Nah. He's just never going to speed up in his life, man. He doesn't know what the speed up button is. Okay, so we're just going to go into Vulcan's next round then. Take care of the ground, Chef. Um, I feel like that's uh, our biggest issue right now. Vulcan's next round, range on the Stangs, that kind of thing. Uh, the Wraith could help. Wraith could help a fair amount. Hmm. Damn, we've got options here. Because we have to think about what he's going to go as well. Overlords, countered by Phoenixes. Wraiths, countered by Phoenixes. Stone I think Phoenixes is actually the go-to. Phoenixes are decent against what he's running. And good against every option here. So for that reason, we probably just have to go the Phoenixes. I'm actually going to stack a lot of them on uh, one side here, I think. And then one over here on this side. Something like this. 
Vulcan. Let's guarantee, or like quote unquote, guarantee a round win here. And just spend like this for now. Think that's totally fine to do. Uh, do I want more upgrades on the tanks now? Upgrades here. Yeah, I'm just gonna upgrade the crap out of stuff. We got something like this. Okay, so he's gonna missile the stangs again, actually. So I should probably back these guys up. Just get them a little bit further away uh, from the stangs. Maybe something a bit more like that. I don't. I really don't want them to get clipped. Because these things are going to get nuked, or these guys are, right? Yeah, these guys. Okay. Okay. Good amount of oil on the ground. This should torch all uh, of his chaff. On this occasion. And really just open up his nerds to uh, the scorpions to take care of business. Oh, this side once again going to get a little bit clapped now. Okay. He's still getting levels on the wasps, man. It's quite spooky, you know. They're gonna go down again here. Uh, rather, they're actually gonna go down this time, which is a big deal. One wasp left alive here. Nice, we get the building counter kill, which is big. Should be able to take this. Oh, now he wants to speed up now that he's losing around. I see how it is. I know this guy's type. Alright. Cool, cool, cool. Goddamn prots. Uh, elite crawler. Probably not worth for us. Probably just not that great. This module. Kind of just want to make these tanks absolute raid bosses, man. Okay. Do we want to go into Incendiary Bomb right now? Hmm. I think with how much he's invested in his nerds, it's definitely totally fine. Should just do that. Um, get these guys ready for war, so to speak. Do I want to go Incendiary, man? That's really the question. Do we want to drop the nuts right here? I think maybe we do. Regular crawlers to distract the heck out of his storm crawlers. Maybe that'll do it. Yeah, this side over here is going to continue to be a bit of a problem, man, but we're just going to ignore that for now. Okay, nice, yeah. Mass, mass upgrades into his wasps, but thankfully we are ready for that. The side bit sad, bit scary. Crawlers are going to get in first and protect our guys over here, so we should be okay on this flank. I'm worried about these guys just having free roam, though. Okay, so our tanks are absolutely fucking just, just chunking everything right now, dude. They don't care about no man. We do actually protect this flank successfully. The stangs are a bit safer now, thanks to the range. But oh my god, he's still just got so many nerds left. I mean, we're killing off a good amount of the wasps. I just don't know if it's going to quite be enough. Getting the building dead will be a huge deal. We have a little pocket of stangs here left alive that might just have to carry the rest of the game here. Oh, but they're stuck hitting tanks. It's a disaster. We have one little pocket left. Now down goes the building. Damn. So we drop this around 100%. Ouch. Damn, these wasps can level again as well, man. This wasps me lovely. This guy legitimately only speeds up um, if he's losing the round. Which is sad. For me, not him. Uh, speed specialist, yep. I forgot to push these last round. I should have saved money for that. Okay, so we have insane speed now uh, on these sledgehammers. They rush in extremely, extremely fast. Uh, which is awesome for us. Levels on them still just really worth a lot. I think they are. These guys definitely need levels to keep up with them damn wasps. Okay. Okay. 
I take a bit of a risk here. I'm gonna pile some mass upgrades into these guys and these guys. And then honestly, maybe just chaff it up. Oh, cat in the way of the screen. I can't see anything. Okay, there we go. Just really trusting in the power of the tanks here, man. This is fine. This flank is all taken care of. Not bad. The tanks super fast are going to crack barrier very, very quickly indeed. And the crawlers now with superior move speed. And uh, Subterrene Blitz should be able to get more done. The Stang's over here as well. Doing a pretty reasonable job. Go Vulcan, go! Get these bloody crawlers dead, man! How the hell did so many crawlers still live? Yeah, nice. We're actually going to win on this side for once. That is big, and it looks like the levels on the Stang's are going to pay off for us as well. Very nice, very nice. Oh, lo and behold, now Prots wants to speed up, man. Well, now, look, I've lost the speed button too, man. What can I say? <laughs> I'll click it for... Oh, well, it's already over, dude. Played his own games against me, man. Thank you. Dude, my tanks are absolute raid bosses, by the way. Dude, this is crazy as hell. Ooh, Sabertooths. Um... Yeah, I'm gonna go Sabertooths here. Missile Interceptor. Um, I think I even elite recruit these. And I'm just gonna spam the crap out of these nerds. Purely as a means of shooting down Stormcaller missiles. That's like their only job. This Vulcan maybe could benefit from just range here. It's going a little bit deep. Hmm. Well, let's just get those guys dead right away. Um, do I start replicating with my own crawlers? That's also a question that we've got to answer uh, right now. Shield back here. Just got to protect from the missile here. You know what, man? I am going to try and replicate with my own crawlers, man. Let's borrow cash. Speed up. Uh, range up. And I think that'll about do it. Okay, so we've got ourselves some extremely, extremely powerful tanks. Oh my god. That's really, really deeply unfortunate. That there's just a melting point in the front line now. It's going to take care of one of the saber tooths quite quickly, as soon as these guys are dead. But okay. So our crawlers are taking care of business very, very handily on this bottom right side now, which is awesome. And the Sabertooths are shooting down a lot of the missiles, if not all. There's still three of them left standing, I think. And okay. It is their only job to get those nerds dead. The Vulcan is just about going to get the chaff dead once again here. Which is big. And now it's the Stangs versus everything. Ooh, look at our crawler swarm go, dude. We actually ping down the building. And that should be golden. Dude, it's hard to measure kind of how much of an impact the Sabertooths had uh, on that occasion. Surely that's enough. Nice. And alright, man. You know what? Let's wrap this one up by covering a replay. I actually shot yesterday and I thought, you know what, man? I'm going to save this. I'm going to hold on to this until I get a good little Sabertooth game and then I'm going to tack this one into the end because this one actually works out in quite a funny little way as well, man. So I'm playing some Maxman Specialist in this one, in this replay, as you can tell by the happy little orange man uh, over here. Pretty good stuff. I mean, you're going up against Elite Specialist, as you can probably tell by the blue crawlers. So let's speed on through the opening rounds here. This one starts off, I don't know, quite standard-ish, I guess. Um, oh god, okay, some stuff lives. Let me time travel you guys to the end of this round. Alright, bam, and there it is. So yeah, man, I think in this video, the real highlight of the video is while the Sabertooth uh, tanks honestly feel kind of garbage to me, they do have some really, really cool edge case uses, right? Particularly for the missile defense drop, which I guess we just kind of saw in the last game. I actually just checked back the clip real quick from the last game to kind of take a measurement of the impact that the missile defense turrets had on the Sabertooth tanks. And bro, they actually absorbed like the first 
two full salvos of missiles from the Stormcallers and kept my Vulcan from being one-shotted. They did a lot, okay? And that Vulcan was integral to killing off the, uh, <laughs> the Crawler Swarm in that last game, man. So they actually did a hell of a lot, man. They saved my Vulcan's life. You know what I'm saying? Which, without that, we would have been swarmed so quickly, man, by those goddamn Crawlers, man, that Crawler Horde. So, yeah, I do believe that they have some really, really nice utility. Anyways, back to this game. Uh, we have a couple of Fang units coming down. Just missile protection, really. Sentry missile protection against these guys. Um... I just like to develop fangs, I guess, as the front line. It just kind of asks questions of your opponent. Um, if they do not build things like Vulcans or Stormcallers or something that can uh, very, very efficiently take out lines of fang units, then later on in the game, once you have like five or six fang units at the front or maybe like four here and one here, one here, something like that, then you hit the portable shield button and suddenly your chaff is like, literally twice as sticky, uh, and it can be a huge, huge problem. So that's why I like fangs on the front line. Um, we also spent the 100 supply to get the first level of defense enhancement uh, on the Happy Research Center. And so, yeah, that's what's going on. Meanwhile, our opponent fleshes out his waves of crawlers, which sadly are going to give him a huge chaff advantage over me now. Uh, it's just kind of hard to keep up with Elite Specialist in the first few rounds. Um... Which, yeah, I mean, <laughs> my goddamn Arclight's even struggling to kind of ping down these crawlers here, and it just buys him plenty of time to kind of take the sting out of my sledges. Now, do we actually still win on this side? Honestly, can't remember. This level 3 Maxman is really no joke. Yeah, he actually does take the W over here on this side. This guy, on the other hand, oh god. Okay, nice, he does actually get it dead. I thought it was going to be another super, super slow ending, but it wasn't to be. Very, very good times. Okay, first big unit selection options become available. Dude, I really, really want to get some games in with a Typhoon and just get it, like, maximally upgraded. It looks so funny and so fun when it's just really geared up. A couple of speed specialist buffs, the mech rage, crazy move speed and just send it. You know what I'm saying? It can feel so good, man. I think right here I end up going for the, me yeah, the melting point. Um, just because I was worried, okay, if he goes fortress or melting point, then the melting point is good. Um, if he goes Typhoon, I'm not scared at all, because my tanks are uh, just being leveled up a little bit, right? My tanks are getting some levels and some ranks. Uh, so I'm not worried about the Typhoons. It would take him a long time to kill his way through my tanks anyway, which are now blue tanks, as you can see. And so, yeah, I felt pretty confident with the Melting Point pickup here. And let me tell you something, man. Minor spoiler. Dude, it ends up being an absolute giga chat. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> and that's kind of the thing, right? With these, like, saber tooth tank focused replays they're not really the star of the show right i mean in the last game we played i guess they kind of were uh that they, they secured the w for us um in that last round but they're never gonna be the unit that like wrecks everything you know what i'm saying i mean they can be but your, your opponent kind of has to capitulate and like underbuild on chaff and um you know what i mean like your opponent has to kind of throw a little bit uh, we're not actually getting to see our opponent's deployment phase here, which is kind of a good thing. Like, keeps you guys in the moment as well, I guess. Keeps you guys guessing what my opponent's going to do. So that's kind of cool. That's a replay bug I actually quite enjoy. But there you go. So the Melting Point, able to connect with one blue tank right away. I was a bit surprised to see that he went for the uh, Typhoons in the end. I just sort of felt like, okay. So if I can just, like, invest more of my Sledgies, then uh, the Sledgehammers will be able to hold up the Typhoons for a long, long time. And so I wasn't too sad that he went for those. Sad that the melting point died without being able to hit level 2. I think it's still stuck at rank 1. Um, which is a little bit sad, but you know. Um, do I actually turn this at the last second? No, I don't get the building dead quickly enough. Oi, 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 oi. Okay, let me skip ahead. Alright, and down we go. We take our first little smidgen of damage here. Big axolotl strikes back, man. Okay, what do I go for here? Of course I do. All right. Uh, yeah, I like. I genuinely forgot for a moment, but yeah, of course. I see Advanced Firepower Control System. If you're ever playing against me, you know I'm going to go for that, right? And I just slam it on some tanks. <laughs> oh, God. I question my own plays sometimes, dude. This is 300 supply wasted, I swear to God. Anyway, man. Anyway, so I've got 400 supply left to spend here. Do I just got more tanks this turn? I actually can't remember if I do. I think what I should do here is probably go, like, I don't know, fangs, fangs, and just, like, bulk up on my fang lines. Maybe even mass recruit, get down another wave of fangs here or something. Or another maxman, maybe, like, on this side. 
just to help get these guys dead. I think that'd be fine. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm actually going to do with this 400 supply. Okay, dude, yeah, I'm just seeing the memes now. <laughs> All right, dude. I mean, I could have predicted that in myself, to be fair. But there it is, okay. So what I end up doing is going sledges on the flanks. Uh, like so, and I'm thinking to myself at this point, I know what I'm thinking at this point, man, because I'm starting to remember now, it's coming back to me. I'm looking at armor piercing bullets right now, I'm like, yeah, this is it. This is going to be the armor piercing bullets game, where I'm going to take these sledgehammers, and they're going to have like, goddamn 15k damage per shot each, and they're just going to be like, one shot in his sledgehammers, and it's going to be sick. And I can already see the thumbnail in my head and stuff, you know? <laughs> well, yeah, it doesn't quite work out that way, man. Anyways, let's just increase game speed by just a little tickle here to kind of wend our way through this round because honestly, it's just more of the same uh, from last round. Chaff collisions, his typhoons kind of winning off the chaff battle a little bit. My tanks getting a little bit overly distracted with uh, with crawlers and just being a little bit too slow to connect. Now, the melting point at least is going to get some work done and burn down as more highly leveled tanks. So at least that's going our way, right? Our level 3 maximum over here is really softening the blow quite a bit. In fact, to the point where enough tanks live where we're actually going to win on this left side, uh, funnily enough. And would you look at that? Our melting point actually lived as well. Okay. Oi, 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 oi. Feels good, man. See, that was all because of the advanced firepower control system. No, it wasn't at all. That was a horrible play. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Okay. So incendiary bomb becomes an option. Strike specialist in case of shenanigans. Absorption module? How would you guys even feel about absorption module? I feel like it's kind of garbage. Me, personally. I think, like, the only unit I feel it's good on is, like, a Wraith. You know what I mean? Put it on a Wraith because a Wraith has, like, a steady stream of DPS. Um, so unless it's getting, like, gunned down by a melting point, it's quite effective on a Wraith. Um, besides that, I don't know, man. Is it that great? I guess it can work on a melting point with multi-targeting, too. Okay, yeah, and as you can see, the memes are just completely possessing me, uh, me right now. Go straight into Mechanical Ridge. I decided to put the fire on this side, I remember, because I'm thinking to myself, he's less likely to shield on this side and more likely to drop a shield, like, here to protect uh, more of his, like, carry units and stuff. And, um, yeah, so that's what we do. That's really it. Okay, so we did fill things out with extra chaff in the end as well, which I'm glad to see that I did that. That's a good thing. <laughs> We're not completely uh, mongoloided in this game. Maybe those were already there last round that I just totally forgot, but... And if I remember right, is this the turn he drops the Overlord? I can't remember. It is. Okay. So the big Chungus Overlord comes out. I protect myself against fire and flames on this side because I'm really desperate to win on this side and just get this building dead on this occasion. So fire on his side, none on my side. Good times. Uh, over there and it's just as well because yeah the overlord comes out this round so obviously very first thing you want to do when the overlord drops check what tech options it has um does it have the mothership or is it just like completely carry style this guy does have the mothership so this is something i should be playing around do i play around it can't remember <laughs> let's find out shall we so yeah the melting point's actually finding a lot of value to be honest i think that if a melting point pops up and like an early unit drop like this is it just always worth getting I think melting points might actually just be a win more unit. And by that, I mean, they kind of work against everything. Like, unless you're really badly losing a chaff game, uh, the melting point will always get some kind of work done. It always threatens crawler production. It always threatens uh, giant deletion. Um, and if you make it multi-target, it can deal with, I mean, any kind of short range uh, unit. Steel ball rushes, rhino rushes, uh, wraiths, overlords, anything like that. I feel like it's a unit you should never really pass up, ever. All right, man. I was pretty pleased with the stem smoke bomb coming down, dude. This is quite hard for him to kind of block uh, with shields because of how far forward his units are. So I was quite happy to see this come out. Um, oh, look at that, dude. I even remembered a barrier myself as well. Oh, yo, yo. I must be finally shedding some of the rust after losing like 14 games in a row when first coming back to play this patch. <laughs> <laughs> which I which I ain't even gonna deny, man, happened. Whenever a new patch comes out, the Lost Streak's always huge for me. I don't know how it is for you guys, but... Okay, so these sledgehammers, you know, they're, they're doing pretty good at this point, man. 5.4k damage per shot. Pretty cool stuff. Not bad. Problem is, man, with the sledgehammer memes, unless you get the sledgehammers down early and get some levels on them, 
Like building level one sledgehammers anytime like after round five becomes a little bit of a problem. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I do really enjoy placing down just extra fang units as you enter into the mid game. I'm a bit surprised I didn't get these down a little bit sooner, uh, to be honest, just to get them all on the field. Um, and yeah. Nice, we actually blocked the hell out of the smoke bomb, or at least most of it. Not bad. Now, the melting point does not have range upgrade, so I'm a bit worried that it runs out of the shield here, uh, eventually. I've got a bad feeling that it does. Anyways, man, this is where the upgrades on my tanks kind of come into their own, man. They're doing great. Well, while they're not getting annihilated by the overlords, they're doing great. You know what I'm saying? They're actually getting it done. Look at them go, man. Look at him go. Nice. Okay. Plink down building just a little bit after this overlord goes down. That's all tight. Buys the melting point a little bit of time. And the melting point's doing great as well. Actually able to hit level 3 now on this melting point. So it's starting. Dude, it's happening. It is occurring with that melting point. And okay. I think that this is the big turn. Yes, it is. Sabertooth's become available. Oi, 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 oi. So the temptation to pick up the stangs there... Oh, yo, yo. There it is, dude. Just no hesitation, man. Look at me go. There was, like, a minor temptation there for a second to pick up the stangs. Then I was thinking to myself, nah, man. I think I have enough fangs at this point now that I'm not worried about him going into Mothership anymore. On the Overlords. I know that he's got a whole pack of uh, Stormcallers down. Or at least a couple packs of Stormcallers, a couple packs of Overlords. Both of these, remember, the missile interceptor on the Sabertooths will also shoot down the missiles that overlords shoot, not just the Stormcallers, men. So they're getting like a double dip of value here. I spread them out all throughout my army like so. And I really think that this is the best use for uh, Sabertooths, men. I feel like this is just such a good use for the Sabertooth tanks. To be fair, it might just be the only use. Like I said, the rate of fire is so bad. They're so slow, dude. Oh yeah, I also upgraded the range of my sledgehammers just now. What was I thinking? I was trying to keep the memes alive, I guess. I mean, they're doing, a good, they're doing a good amount of work, to be fair. To be fair, they're doing a good amount of work, man. I think that they've earned it. They're doing all right, man. Also, the range is going to keep these guys from walking into the smoke, I believe. So that's going to be quite good for us, too. Okay, let's speed this along, and let's just try to measure the impact that these Sabertooths have. I think they do a pretty decent job, mostly at keeping the Sledgehammers alive, which is the main thing I'm trying to protect uh, from the Overlords more than anything. We completely eviscerate an entire pack of uh, missiles on that occasion. Once again here, the goddamn melting point is in big, big danger, but it's got a couple of overlords, uh, sorry, a couple of sabertooths either side of it. One of them is eventually going to get clapped down here just a little bit, but they buy a lot of time for the melting point to get some work done here. Ooh, just about kind of draw even uh, on this side, at least until now the overlord starts clearing everything, uh, everything up, of course. But you know what, man? I think like they did a pretty okay job. And the fact that this guy dropped triple scorpion kind of saved him in this last round. It really did a lot for him, you know, uh, to get those Sabertooths dead like that. If he hadn't had those Scorpions on field, or if he'd only dropped like a couple of them, he actually dropped three in the end, this round could look quite a bit different. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's speed up. Oh, never mind. It's already over. Oh, God. Ah, oh, let's slow things down. Show sure panel. Of course I got a tech specialist. All right, man. Here we go, dude. The range, the energy diffraction... On the melting points. That's it, man. We go speed, we go range, all of that good stuff comes out. This thing is getting really, really tanky at that point, which is the main thing I'm a bit concerned about. I feel like the Maxman, um, they've just got a lot on their plate. They've got a lot to deal with. And, um, yeah. That's why I go ahead and go to the more melting points here. Now, what I would like to see myself do is get another pack of crawlers here, another pack of crawlers here. Do I actually do that? I can't remember. But I should definitely, like, mass recruit and stuff and just dump crawlers on both sides mostly to try and buy more time going into the scorpions that's how that's what i feel like i should do because right now my carry unit uh the melting points they have good range because of the range enhancement but they still can't really compete with scorpions particularly acid scorpions so i don't know if i do that oh god it looks like i got more fangs mass recruit mass recruit so it's gonna be like fangs here and here then i guess is that what i do yeah fangs here and here okay <laughs> 
<laughs> Dude, it's kind of funny when watching the game that you recorded a few days ago and you're trying to predict your own plays. And like, um, it's also really helpful to kind of wonder about, ooh, what could I have done a little bit different, you know? Uh, it is quite helpful to see. But okay, I think I do like the play on the melting points that we made. I think that's fine. It's going to help to bulldoze the tanks, the typhoons, and the overlords. So, yeah. These melters are really going to get a lot done for us. And let's just see how it all pans out, shall we? So once again, man, good old Sabertooths. Shooting down a bit of everything. They're a little bit safer on the flanks now from getting engaged on uh, by the Scorpions. For at least that little bit longer, and it's just about buying time, man. Most of his chaff is going down now. Now the melting points are connecting on stuff that really matters. Dude, look at the bullet spray, man. It looks so cool, man, the bullet spray coming out of these goddamn Sabertooths, dude. As they just work to buy us time. And you know what? When they get close to the Scorpions like this, they really punish them as well. Absolutely delete them from the video game. And that's a crap load of damage. Alright, man. Cool. So. Couple of little, a couple of little uh, demo games, I guess. Uh, as we just review Battlefield. A couple of little demo games of the power. Of good old Missile Interceptor on the Sabertooths. I think it's really genuinely good. Mostly because when the Sabertooth drops, you get a couple of Sabertooths right off the bat. Then the Missile Interceptor only costs 200 supply. So even if you only stick with just two Sabertooths like this, it's just a lot of health. It's 50k health on either tank, right? So they just assist with your front line a little bit. And it's like two permanent uh, missile sentries. You know what I'm saying? That just, yeah, that, that, that just respawn again at the, at the start of every new round. And they're with you for the rest of the game. You never have to worry about things like sentry missiles ever again. And they do a good amount of work against a surprising amount of units when you factor in that they can shoot down incendiary bombs from Vulcans. They can shoot down the projectiles from Overlords. Yada, 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 man. I feel like they're actually a cool little unit. And I'm sorry to Sabertooths for talking smack about them when they first came out. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you all did enjoy. Make sure if you've got any of your craziest replays, you do go ahead and share them in the official Mechabellum Discord, which is linked down below in the Share Your Replay channel. And I'm going to get back to reacting to some of your guys' craziest games, as is our favorite thing to do in Mechabellum. So thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I'm going to catch all of you all just a tad bit later, man.